Hey Jim, I got my battle rifle set up just this way. How do you like it? <laughs> nice, uh, nice weapon, but uh, you're missing a few things. Am I? I thought it was done. <laughs> hold on, hold on. I got something new. What, what about this? Is, is this too much? Why you gotta always one up me, man? <laughs> Sorry. Let's talk about it. <laughs> Welcome back to Class Firearms, guys. Kai over here, and we've got Jason with us. What's going on, folks? And we've got Jim Foreman here. He's uh, from Ferro Concepts and Actions On. He's going to tell us uh, a little bit about yourself, maybe? Yeah. Um, so Jim uh, retired from the Navy, SEALs, 27 years. And now I'm here with you guys about to talk about some weapon systems. Exactly. And but before you do that, you are... Uh, retired Navy SEAL, you, you're with Ferro Concepts, who does some really cool military kit, law enforcement kit, and also Actions on Consulting, which is your own consulting company where you train, uh, you do leadership skills and tactical and all that stuff. Correct. All right, good stuff. So check them out, guys, Ferro Concepts and Actions on Consulting. And in this video, Jim is going to break down our own rifle setups here. Yeah. He's going to let us know what he likes, what he doesn't like, and uh, how he sets up his rifles. Mm -hmm. Is that good with you, Jim? Yeah. So that being said, should we get going? Let's get to it. His is the worst one? <laughs> probably, right? probably. <laughs> yeah, Aaron, I mean, uh, Jason, right here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's start with the very first one, and let's use this one. Yep. And what we have here is this wonderful 13.9 build. I think this is Ryan's build. You got sitting on an ADM lower, so. It is sexy, so it's it, definitely it is very Ryan's sexy. build. And you're left-handed, so it gives you a little bit more capability in that. Um, sitting inside of a Criterion barrel on top of here as well, and also a Ripcord Industries handguard, man. So, Jim, please yeah. take it away. It's pretty simple. Yep. So you got mm -hmm. your uh, red dot. I like that you got your iron sights for a backup. Mm -hmm. So that's always uh, important. Cool. Um, and you got a flashlight. And uh, big deal is that all the cables are tucked in with this um, bungee system right here. Mm -hmm. So it's, nothing's going to get snagged or anything. And um, it's easy to get to the push button. So you got a push button mm -hmm. uh, up here and also a pressure switch. And it's out of the way. I like it on top. Vice on the side where it could get bumped. Um, AD, like a have light AD, which is mooey, not good. <laughs> um, also, the sling setup, I like that it's set up back here instead of up to the front mm -hmm. because that can also cause a light AD if you do have a flashlight or a laser push button on the side. And what I noticed when we were training with Active Crisis, on top of that, yes, uh, Jim is also a, one of the owners of this company called Active Crisis, providing tactical training to a lot of folks and a bunch of other things, and all run by all, all SEALs. We just did a training with them, with videos will be coming out. I noticed that when I was doing a reload and I had it set up not the right way, my, my sling was attached all the way up here. So when I was doing a reload, my sling would be in the way if I could show like that to the camera. It was like this. Yeah, so it would be like, like it would just get in the way. So having Ryan moving this back here, if I'm in the sling and I'm just doing a reload, this is a little tight, let me adjust a little bit. It's just out of the way, you know? So this is a pretty good setup right here. I'm at this part, in my yep. opinion. Yep. And I learned that from you. That's right. Yeah. So what else? So, so your thoughts on the light. You said, you don't, lights are very, very necessary, but you don't like, Lights. I don't like lights. I mean, that's because for me, historically, I had night vision and IR lasers. So I didn't really need a uh, visible flashlight. Okay. And uh, a lot of guys have them on the guns, but sometimes it caused light ADs. And that just giving away your position, um, especially uh, when you're pretty much in the building or moving up to a building or something like that. So that was a big no-no. It's almost as bad as a... Uh, actual uh, discharge. So wow. light AD is a big no-no. So I didn't really like flashlights, but that's because I had night vision. Uh, a lot of guys need to have lights and totally get that. Um, so just make sure you rig up your lights so they're not super sensitive. And just a little, that's what, like the sling coming from the top could set it off. Um, bumping into one of your guys could set it off. Anything could set it off. You want to have it so it's actually a physical on off. And it's and gotta it's, be uh, very intentional. Intentional, correct. And another question I have for you is, what are your thoughts about lights being mounted on, you know, like three o'clock position on this side as opposed to the other side? 
Yeah, it doesn't really matter whatever you'd like. Um, I, if I did have one, I'd probably mount one on this side just to keep it clean from this side. Um, and it does also make room for a IR laser on top or a visible laser on top. Got you. So Ryan's uh, setup is what? It's clean. Yeah, it's nice. It's um, well done. It's very simple. So not much to it, but he's got all the basics. Oh, it's gotcha. like the most professional Buster build ever. And I got another question. This robust charging handles. What are your thoughts on that when it comes to ARs? Um, they're great because especially like cold weather where you're wearing gloves, it's nice to have something sticking out. I just prefer the, a little bit uh, longer on the right side. Okay. Right, so oh, I get because you're a lefty. No, no, I, well, I'm left-handed pistol, right-handed okay. rifle. So when I charge, it's easier for me to use this finger um, on the side I right? see. when I'm charging. Mm -hmm. So I don't necessarily have them on both sides; I just have it on the right side. Okay, all right, moving on. So Ryan, nice job, man. Ah, uh, got this wonderful Sig MCX 11.5 Virtus. Um, I keep it pretty simple uh, with the things that I need and the things that I don't need, actually. Um, visible laser on top is just a CQBL1 by Steiner, um, hooked up to a Unity um, button system. It's got both the manual and the, um, one, or the, one, the button for the laser and also the button for the light. But here's the thing, since I'm running just a laser on top as well, because this is only visible and IR, I have hooked up, um, paired with, married to a vampire light. So it gives me white light, it gives me IR capability, and also an override if I need to just go completely off as well, so. Can't on your IR, can mm. you do flood? I cannot do flood on this, but I can do flood right. from. That's why I was wondering if you yep. could do it on this. You kind of don't need that How do you get one. there? Yeah. Yep. yeah. So yeah, that's awesome. So this is pretty compact, mm -hmm. uh, nice. Um, I like, the, as I was saying before, the flashlight being on the right side frees up um, your laser. Mm -hmm. and also your push buttons for your left side mm -hmm. or on the top. Obviously, he has his laser mounted correctly on top or on the bottom. On top is definitely preferred. If you have mounted to the left or the right, you have to take account that two and a quarter inches offset to the left or the right. So if you're shooting at you know, 10 feet, you want to be hitting two and a half inches to the left, so you're going to be aiming two and a half inches. Uh, oh, so you got to guesstimate work. Yeah, a bit. but if you shoot point of impact at 10 feet, the um, you're going to be crossing, right? Your That's laser, right, yeah. You're your right. laser and your bullet trajectory are just going to go like this. Gotcha. So at 100 yards, you're going to be off. For oh, sure. be off so you for want sure. to make sure you're two and a half inches near, and it's going to keep going two and a half inches all the way to 100. Also with this, I love my Leupold LCO. It's one of the best optics for me. Um, I, I have a crazy astigmatism, so I need something that's a pretty crisp dot. It gives me Eotech wide field of range and yeah. motion, and also it's just a crisp dot for me. Um, other than that, just pair with a Surefire RC2. and Yeah, that and good. also you uh, got a rise yeah. on that, so it makes it easier Clear to get your, oh, yeah. your uh, cheek weld. Yeah. What's so, the height on that? So the height on that is actually 2.2 .2, uh, on this. So it's not too, too tall. It's not tall at all. It keeps my head up in a very upright position, yeah. so. especially while shooting under nods. Um, it's good for passive shooting for me, and that's just my deal, and it, it works for its jazz, man. Gosh darn, I hate this. Like, not, not that I hate because it, it's freaking right. Yeah. Hey, man. Because I thought 2.2 would be way too high. When, when, you, when you put those nods on it, yeah. it, it does its work. <laughs> Gosh, so. okay. So you want to have it like where your head's looking up, yeah. and you just bring it up in the red dot right, right there, there, just like I can see it. So. All right, Jason, you convinced me, man. Hey. I like your sling setup too. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. One day at a time. What, what brand Sherman. is that? Edgar Sherman sling. Okay. Yeah. But I'm, I have to get a fair so I'm just. Hey, I'll ask. say, like this right here, I think they had on the other weapon, a mm -hmm. bungee is mm -hmm. nice because you can just tuck it away. It's not flopping around. Oh. And if you need it, you can just rip it out. Yeah. Yep. And also on his cables, he's got a tie 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 there to keep his cables tight. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there's no excess shit loop, you know, sticking out. Mm -hmm. So nice and clean. There you go. Appreciate you. All right. There it is. There it's go. got the uh, Ferro Concept uh, yep. diamond sling. Yep, this used to be mine. That's right. Yes, guys. He, this was uh, Jim's personal one. He just took it off, gifted it to me. So now I have no choice but use this or else I'll get upset. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> it's, no, I is, love it. It's an amazing sling. This is good. You, yeah. you know, the sling set up correctly. Um, like I said, flashlight could go on the left or the right as long as it's out of the way. It's nice to also have it on the left because you got the push button on the back. That's the only reason. So you could just it. push. That's the physical, you know, definitely an indent. Yeah. You're going to be physically pushing on and off. So that makes it easier instead of coming to the top. Yeah. And you got your laser on the top, which makes it super simple to side in. Yeah, the one thing I got to add here is obviously cable, like pressure pad for the laser mm -hmm. right here. That's why there's this empty spot. I've got to get that. This one I've been saying ever since. It's a 1.5, I was gonna do 1.7, now I'm looking at Jason's 2.2, so I think yeah. that probably will. So right when you come up, you actually have to do this. You gotta go down a little to bit. Get down, so it's then, too low. Yeah, too low. But uh, yeah, the flashlight, I figured, um, uh, there you go. So I'm just like doing this. So I'm doing this, and if I wanna get on the light, I just wanna press intentionally. See, if it's on the other side, and this pressure pad dies, or something happens, or cable snags, yep. I just, my thought was like, I can't get to it. Right. So I put it on this side. That was my thing. But um, other than that, the sling setup, what do you think? Do you think the uh, placement is pretty good? Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, same thing. It's out of the way. It's close. And it's a short rifle anyway. So you don't want to, you want to have as far back on the front as possible. Right. Gotcha. Yeah. So you could even move it back. Move it back. Just one more inch and a half. And that would be probably the best spot. Yeah. And, and what he's talking about is right here. I had my sling uh, hook right here. I moved it here, and the reason for that was when I was grabbing it, it was kind of getting in the way in yeah. my hand. Oh, that makes sense, yeah. But it wasn't too bad, but this still gets in the way when I reload. Yeah, so I need, to, I need to move it back. Yeah, yeah. good stuff. Yeah, this is nice uh, because what power scope is this? This is a uh, one to six. eight, one to six. Yep. Yep. One to eight. Yeah. One to eight. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's nice. This is how I uh, roll. I have a uh, two and a half to ten. Um, and then I like to put a red dot on. And you guys have a red dot. And it's canted at that 45. Mm -hmm. And that's my only pet peeve. Because uh, personally, like some guys can get really quick at shooting like that. But I like to put my red dot mounted on the scope ring. Usually on the, the one further back. Some put it on the front. But if it's on the scope ring, it's just like an inch and a half higher than your scope. So if you need to take a long shot, you can come in, tuck your head in, and you take a long shot. But if you need to uh, take a closer shot and you got your red dot, usually yeah. from you know zero to 80 or 100 yards, you're gonna be hitting like head plates with yeah. the red dot. And that's awesome. So you have both eyes open and you just pop it up and it's sitting right there and you yeah. just uh, tag targets. But if you have to do this, it changes everything, right? Especially if you're coming up you had to bring it in this way. Plus, I see that, you know what happens? You get that chicken wing too. You kind of yep. like. Right, so I always yeah. like being efficient, super yeah. simple. However I'm doing one way, I want to do it the same way every time. So for my red dot and my scope, it's the same procedure. I just have an inch and a half difference in my height. Gotcha, my height. economy of motion, man. Yep, yeah. and the, this right here should be taken care of just because it's going to get stuck on mm -hmm. something, especially out, out in the woods. So this needs to be zip tied, zip tied, tight, taped up, taped up whatever you need just to keep it smooth on the, the rail. Okay, pretty simple, nothing else. That's it, it's a pretty uh, simple setup. So um, you talked about foregrips, yep. right? What are your thoughts on that one, like angled or non foregrips or some other crap that you were talking about, you had your own Oh reason. yeah, so I like the foregrip because it gives you tons of control, right? And when you come through a door, if you see somebody as an unknown person, you can do a muzzle strike, right? But it's not from here where I could lose or push the weapon back, back this way. Yeah, like you're right, yeah. Or towards me, see? So you could hit me in the head because I'm holding my hand like this, gotcha. see? So you could push it back on me. But if I have this, it's gonna be harder, but already I'm coming in. Oh yeah. Right, Fair. so I could do a muzzle strike, I could do whatever, and then identify if you're a threat or not, but I already, hopefully disabled you right off the bat. Yeah. Um, that and makes, th that's I, I also why that. you want to come in a door, not like this to come up, because you already got me. Yeah. Right. High ready versus low. So I like the foregrip. I know on some of you guys, the uh, 10 inch, you can't have a foregrip. Yeah. So you have the little piece, and then you're forced to hold the weapon like that. Yeah. So. But a 16 inch gun or a longer gun, this, this makes actually perfect sense to uh, well, have Could you it. do that on a 14 inch? You can do it on a 14 yeah. inch, even yeah, all, as low as 13.9. Yeah. Dude, this yep. makes perfect sense. It actually gives you that yeah. nice control. Mm -hmm. Okay. Never thought of that before, honestly, because I always thought of foregrip 
just, you know, more of like a stable, is it more stable this way or is it this way? For me, it's better this way. Yeah. You know, kind of have that little C-clamp. But this makes a lot it's of more sense. more of a CQC, CQC entering the room. Yeah. Right. Okay, hey. Awesome. Well, other than that, this is about it. Um, we we have, what do we have? Pistols as well? Yeah, you, you want to bring your yeah. pistol? Cool. Right, and what we have here is just my little simple P320. It's a full size one. It's got the X5 grip modules, not the one with the tungsten infused. Um, didn't want to go for the extra weight on that. But I do have this lovely flared out Magwell. Sitting here, I did send this out to get it milled for the Acro. Um, I have a love-hate relationship with the Acro, but I love it mainly. Um, obviously, if it gets sights, it gets lights, that's me. Is that your third or fourth Acro? This is my fourth one. Okay. Later on that. <laughs> <laughs> but it comes with these lovely 21 rounders and just Grip tape, and that's about it. Yeah, nice. Yeah, um, yeah feels good. I like this dovetail up top. Mm -hmm. And flashlight is easily turned on off. It's, this is super simple, and the acro is like right there mm -hmm. on top. So Always. I like the red dots. Uh, uh, Kai, you like your iron sights? I'm more of an iron sight guy, yeah. but I understand the superiority of red dots over iron sights, but I'm just not fully transitioned yet. Yep, that's we'll, fine. We'll get you there. Yeah. We'll get you there. So yeah, this is simple. It's well done. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Well, I mean, with the pistols, like we've got Ryan's Glock 45 uh, kind of custom built thing. We've got the uh, Afterburner 2, Surefire Turbo, which kind of RMR, with the Glock's performance trigger here. It's a nice little setup here. Um, do, do you still, f first of all, what do you think? And I want to know about your thoughts uh, on lights on pistols. Yeah. For defensive so, use purposes. Yep. So for me, I never had a light on my pistol for the AD thing. And I also had my uh, night vision and all that stuff. And I didn't even have a laser on my pistol. It was just slick. You know, yeah. iron sights, that's what I had. Now I'm rolling with a, a red dot, no flashlight. I understand, like, especially for home defense or LE, you're going to be wanting a flashlight mm -hmm. to identify threats. So that's something that you're going to be uh, taking. These are nice because it is very positive on and on with the uh, flashlight. Yeah. Right? So, and you can flip it with your finger. Mm -hmm. We can press too. Yep. And so it's um, very sm uh, small chance of a light AD, and it's still fucking light, you know? Yep. So yeah. it's nice. This is a nice setup. And, and the best comp. Thing, yep. The comp is really nice. Yeah, I love the comps. And the best thing about the X300, the reason why it has a standoff is for, as crazy as it sounds, if you ever have to put that gun into something, it will never be out of battery because of the standoff. So, That's right. Yep. You put a little contact shot. Mm -hmm. Yep. Bye bye. It will yeah. not uh, jam up. Yep. Hey Ryan, what was that barrel to? Uh, that's uh, part of Radiant's afterburner. Radiant's oh, afterburner barrel. It's a system. Mm -hmm. System, yeah. Really good setup. This, this is, is yours, awesome. Ryan? Yeah, that's right. His mm -hmm. personal uh, gun. Really the barrel's cool. the Ramjet. There you go. Yeah, Ramjet with the afterburner. Yeah, Radiant. Really cool. All right, well, uh, Jason, you got anything else to add here? Because I honestly think I just... There's a couple things I'm going to change. Just like if you guys haven't seen the video, but we did, uh, uh, Jim rated our plate carriers and battle belts. Learned a few things, yeah. even though all these years I've worn plate carriers, here I am, learning still, will continue to learn. And now on my rifles, I'm gonna change a couple of little things too. There you go. So, I'm gonna move that flashlight now on the other side, I think. Even though I know the AD thing, yes, I'm more intentional, but still, that- It's fine, it, it would just it's fine to have it on the left, because you got that, you don't need a push button. Yeah. I know, you but know, I could still have maybe AD if I- Mission Not if your thumb's gone. Yeah. Maybe my thumb's gonna go, I got big hands. <laughs> yeah. But anyways, I learned a few things. I really appreciate you. Uh, you got anything else? Uh, he's done it all, man. Yeah. Let us know in the comment section, what, do you, what did you think about Jim's commentary on this and how you have your AR rifle, whatever you have, set up. Yeah. And let us know why you have certain things that you have on there. And don't forget to uh, submit that to us at Class Firearms Instagram for bust your builds, because we will bust your builds with our Limited knowledge compared to uh, Jim over here. I wish Jim joined us on one of the uh, subject matter expert, subject matter enthusiast. Enthusiast. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just a wannabe. <laughs> but, but no. Uh, so we do uh, bust your builds episodes. Yep. People just submit their rifles and their setups, and we kind of try to bust them as much as we can, rate them. Yeah. I wish we did one with you. Yep. Uh, Man, fun. that would have yeah. been, that would been good times. But maybe next time. Yep. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, again, let us know, guys. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Um, we appreciate your business. God bless. God bless. And I forgot to mention cfcontest.com. Check it out. Good stuff happened there. 
a lot of uh, stuff that you could take home yeah. with you. Good stuff. So, anyways, God bless. We'll see you next time.